All right, folks, happy Labor Day. Uh, I woke up this morning uh, and failed to drag a comb across my head, obviously. Um, I woke up this morning thinking about Labor Day. And as my responsibility uh, with Elephant goes, I, I generally, we generally will post or blog about whatever is going on in the world. And I thought about Labor Day and I really thought, well, other than Labor Day sales and Labor Day picnics and Labor Day parades, I didn't really seem to have any idea what it was about. Uh, I knew it was about labor, unions. I know unions have been under attack, particularly in Wisconsin, but nationally um, from our Republican brothers and sisters. And I know unions can be corrupt, and I know unions can be super helpful. And I felt like, well, I should just go online and check it out. So I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube this morning and blogged up a couple of them. And I want to just show you an excerpt from one right now, if I may, while all of you are tuning in, hopefully. And we, um, we have about uh, 20,000 of you uh, tuning in today. Um, every day we do this video, which is pretty exciting. And then um, maybe another uh, 1,000, 2,000, 100,000 over the course of the next month or two. So. I think this is an opportunity for all of us to think about our current job and kind of where we have come from. Similar to the uh, civil rights movement or the uh, equal rights movement for women, um, labor, which affects all of us, men, women, and children. Sadly, it, it affected children, of course, very much in the US and Canada. Uh, labor affects all of us. So it's a good thing to uh, think about. So just let's watch this 10 seconds. It's kind of mind blowing have paid holidays because of the labor movement. We have a do, eight hour do, day do, do, because do. of the labor This is history, we by the way, not um, some sort of uh, politically slanted things. So this is a video from CNN uh, titled Labor Day's Violent Beginnings. And that there is Willie Nelson, and I'm named after, half after Waylon Jennings. So let's start right here. Yeah, it's a strong. We have paid holidays because of the labor movement. We have a eight hour day because of the labor movement. Eight hour day. We have paid vacations because of the labor movement. We have health care, those of us who still have it, because of the labor movement. And it's a chance really to recognize those kinds of games. But over time, it's become much more than that. It has become- So that's just the part I want to play. And of course, we have a lot of other things uh, that aren't mentioned here. We have, uh, we have lost a lot of things because of the labor movement. We have lost the 16-hour workday, six days a week. Can you imagine? Right now, we entrepreneurs love to, uh, you know, wear sweaty, extra-large T-shirts and eat day-old pizza and work 16 hours a day or 12 hours a day, six days a week or seven days a week. But we do so um, by choice. And it's kind of fun and romantic and difficult. Can you imagine having to do that every day of the year uh, without any environmental protections, without any light, without any breaks? Uh, this is what women, men, and even children as young as six had to do in the U.S. only um, a bit over a century ago. So this is Labor Day is, is one of the greatest equal uh, represents one of the the culmination of one of the greatest equal rights movements of our time, and it's such a recent time. Uh, it's kind of inspiring to me. And whether or not we're Republican or Democrat or Libertarian or uh, Socialist, whatever our view is, we can appreciate that we don't have to work sixteen hours a day, uh, six or seven days a week. And if we do, hopefully, um, it's because we want to. Uh, obviously, there's still issues like minimum wage nationally is, um, is a big movement. In Elephant Journal, we do our part. We have moved our minimum wage from $14 an hour up to 15 and now 16. But there's many businesses that, because the minimum wage is so low, um, you know, single moms or others will have to work two or three jobs. My mom did that, never made more than $12,000 a year. And she often worked uh, two or three jobs plus some odd jobs and um, Ashley Hitchcock. I don't know if she's with us, but uh, she works for elephant. She used to work like four, four uh, 
parts of jobs before she came to Elephant. And uh, so it's a very real thing. And, and think of your favorite little child. Imagine them working six or seven days a week with in unsafe conditions. Um, in that video I just showed you, uh, they mentioned how many accidents happened. And uh, of course there was no workers comp. So for those of us who love to hate on government, this was, you know, the promise in the United States of America is that government is by, of, and for the people. And of course that's imperfect always and we have to fight for it. So hopefully this video will help you remember what we wanna fight peaceably for, which is, um, that it is our government and it represents our needs and our needs include workers comp, minimum wage, uh, safe working conditions, environmental conditions. Think about what you're wearing. Most US companies, even my favorites like Patagonia, will make their clothes overseas where there are no in, or less environmental protections or less uh, worker protections. Um, and that's for a reason, it's, it's much, much cheaper. So you know, try and wear a second hand, try and really um, support, you know, conscious consumerism is supporting uh, people who have good protections, basically, um, whether it's fair trade or fair labor. Uh, it just feels better too. I just drank some um, made in the USA uh, mug here, but I just drank uh, some amazing coffee that's fair labor. Kicking horse, I love them, oh my God. Um, and uh, today I wanna to give a shout out to our sponsor, their green sustainable food delivery company called Sunbasket, sustainable um, meat, fish, and then vegan options. I'm a vegan boy, so I go that direction. And uh, there's a lot of food delivery services with tons of dry ice and plastic crap. So this is one that's avoiding all the worst stuff and giving you actually good food. And I have to say, after doing a couple of the meals um, it, it, it's getting me cooking um, in a really easy, help, healthy, helpful way. So thank you to Sunbasket and any of you in the US, you can get three free meals from them through Elephant in the comments, there's a link. Alrighty, if any of you are tuning in, like Robin from Twain Hart, California, um, please say where you're from and if you have any questions or comments about, you know, I could talk about right livelihood, if you'd like, um, the Buddhist notion of work that um, has four aspects uh, to be right livelihood, or we can just meditate and get on with our uh, picnics. All right, Marissa, um, and I would like to note that even though this is sort of a, I don't know, a sort of political uh, discussion in some ways, this is our most watched video ever so far. So if you have any comments, say where you're from, and uh, I'm trying to cover up the number here so I don't see the number of how many of you are watching. It makes me self-conscious. It makes me think about how many people are watching instead of trying to connect with you, which is the point. Um, all right, Julie from the UK. Heather Maxfield, you've used Sunbasket since January 2015. That's impressive. Liz Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, I still recommend, of course, the first line of defense from a good food, good conscious consumerism point of view is uh, the less packaging, the best, so go to farmer's market. Um, but if you don't have time and you need to add more cooking and more meals to your repertoire, uh, some basket seems like a great way to go and far better than the others that I've seen. All right, Heather from Olympia, Washington. Jesse from Central California. Any uh, comments or questions? Antonio from Chicago, Texas. Savannah. Uh, Crystal from Edmonton. Ganel from Israel. Hello. Where in Israel? Tell me where in Israel. I went to uh, Tel Aviv and the Dead Sea in uh, Jerusalem a couple years ago. San Mateo, California. Markesha. Heather, namaste, namaste. Respect. Derek from Michigan. Love from Canada. All right, right livelihood. Linnea. Hey, Linnea from Boulder. I have no plans other than ironically working a little bit. Sadly, I should not be working. Out of patriotism, I should be honoring Labor Day and not working. Sharin from India. Rhiannon from Woodlands, Texas. Linnea, what are your plans? Or any of you, what are your plans for Labor Day? All right, everyone's from different places. Lake Arrowhead, we need to match a couple of you up. Alexandra from Greece. By the way, speaking of matching, if any of you are looking to date, meet mindful 
um, is another sponsor and they're kind of like a mindful uh, dating site. Check them out. Teresa from Montreal, Greece. I'm, I'm uh, jealous of you, Alexandra. I want to go to Greece. Lake City, Samantha. Debbie Aberdeen, Orla, no questions, it looks like, but everyone's from super cool places. Samantha from Ohio, just moved from Okinawa. Now live in North Carolina. Husband's a Marine, hello to you, and respect and thank you to your husband for his service. Da from Barcelona, David from Barcelona, uh, Roberta, okay, I can't read all this. South Africa, it's awesome. Glasgow, Scotland. Lynn, um, our editor, our lead editor, Emily, is moving to, to Edinburgh. I don't really have a very good Scottish accent, but... Tracy from Tennessee. Hey, from Paraguay. Wow. Like to you. Saskatchewan. Coolest sounding word ever. Russ from flying a drone or something. All right. I could do this all day. There's so many of you from so many places. You're hiking today after breakfast. That's cool. It is cool, though, just to go through these names and see what a community. Um, Yevgenia from Latvia. You're going to have to help me say that. Dawson Creek. All righty, folks. Um, Boise, Idaho. All right. I can't do this all day. So, Derek, I think the worst job in the U.S. would be pretty much any job pre-whenever it was, 1878 or something. Um before there were labor and environmental standards and safety standards and um, basic rights for human beings who work. Um, but what's the worst job in America today? I don't know, that's a great question. What do you guys think is the worst job in the US today? I think the worst job, obviously pay is a major factor. So fast food or any company that barely or doesn't pay minimum wage on the other hand, there's some fast food companies that are trying to pay their workers really well and trying to be good, like Chipotle in a lot of ways. Um, yep, Russ, president of the U.S. might be one of the worst jobs. But I think if you're going to be president and you're not a total egomaniac, um, many of them are, but uh, you're hopefully doing it out of some sense of like surrender to service. You're just saying, I'm just going to try and do my best and I'm going to give up on being liked or having any kind of life. But yeah, being president would be tough. Alrighty. Um, yeah, a job you hate, exactly. Working for Verizon or Comcast, working for one of those companies. Oh my God, Judy, I'm with you. Retail, I don't know, I, I worked retail for years, I loved it, because um, it's so social. Yeah, I think those of you saying a job you don't enjoy, um, it's really powerful to do a, a job that you connect with and that you like I remember being a barista and I wasn't even a good barista and I loved it because just connecting with people and girls, you know, it was just fun. And uh, I was at the Trident in Boston where I got fired actually. Worst job in the US is being an IRS agent. Yeah, they've been underfunded and uh, respect to them, love to them. They do not get any love. Yeah, Debbie, I had an employer in Boston who kept my hours just below 40 so that they didn't have to pay health care. Those kind of employers are scummy. Uh, worst job is being unemployed. Yeah, if you're, that's a great point. Lenid. Courtney, uh, how aware of yourself were you hitting a milestone age? Well, I'm 42, so I think the last milestone age I hit was 40. Did I have any self-wealth or inner self-goals I wanted to achieve within that year? Yeah, I mean, I would like to make a ton of money so that I can be somewhat independent and donate things to good causes and then get involved in politics. Um, and I'd like to get involved in politics without having to beg um, wealthy people for donations. I think uh, starting with Howard Dean and now Obama and Bernie and even Trump, um, the success politicians are having raising money in small increments is really liberating. It's some good news for the uh, political system. Yeah, Carrot, well said. I love serving, but I hate it at times. Social jobs when you are an introvert. Yeah, that could be the worst job, but it's also probably a good stretch as long as you have time and meditation that you can take care of yourself after those. Liam, I'm sorry you're not enjoying it. 
Child Protective Services, that's got to be pretty thankless. Anything we do with sewage, obviously. Mobile company. All right, lots of great uh, suggestions for the worst job. All right, I'm going to end this with a couple minutes of meditation. Let you all get to your Labor Day. And let's, um, let's uh, just focus on if you haven't been as happy as you would like, if you've been stressed out, if you've been speedy, um, if you're going through any kind of difficulty, or from a positive point of view, if you'd want to connect more with openness and with the sort of love that you feel romantically, but just in everyday life for no good reason, meditation is a great way to do that. So, um, and we can talk about Right Livelihood another time, or you can check out Travis, you could put my Right Livelihood blogs and videos in the comments, please. Um, all right, so those of you who'd like to join, Take a good posture. Hopefully it's everybody. Meditation doesn't have to be for weirdo hippies. Um, it can be for anybody. All right. So take a good posture and a deep breath. And relax your good posture. If your shoulders are tight, you can move them up, back, down, and relax them. Eyes can stay open. Your hands are just flat on your thighs. And find your breath in and out. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's do that a few times with your attention lightly on your breath, in and out. If you find yourself thinking, notice that and return your attention to your breath, in and out. And that's the practice of meditation. So you can do that as long as you'd like. You notice your thinking, your distraction with gentleness, not with condemning yourself. Just notice oh, I'm thinking. It can be a good thought, a bad thought, a neutral thought, doesn't matter. Oh, I'm thinking. Return your attention to your breath in and out. Okay, we can end with a bow of mutual respect. Thank you so much. Enjoy Labor Day. Honor what it's about all our hard-won privileges. If you've liked this video at all, like it or share it. Most importantly, get your three free meals from Sunbasket. If you'd like Elephant's best articles, our best content, our best offerings for you that you probably won't see through Facebook because Facebook is more about sort of viral, sexy stuff, get our newsletter, elephantjournal.com slash best, and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. We do these every day. So... Wow, so many people are tuning on. Maybe it's because everyone has the day off. I feel like I should do something more useful. Are there any requests for a subject before I tune off? Such a crazy number. Um, maybe I'll just talk about right livelihood. So there's no greater joy in life. Well, maybe there are, like sex or love or a good meal, good coffee. But there's very few greater joys in life than working at a job that you love. Why? Because you're doing it so many hours of your life, eight hours a day, maybe more. My job I've done 12 to 14 to 16 hours a day, six to seven days a week, five to seven days a week for 14 years, and I love it. And in the gaps, I have relationships, I have friendships, I try and eat good food, I take my dog out for a walk, and I try and exercise and meditate. So I try and manage any stress that comes up. But what are the qualities of right livelihood? This is uh, applicable to any of you. Whether you're in a job, whether you've started your own company, whether you're unemployed, whether you're young and you're looking for what your career is going to be. So when I was young, I loved baseball. I loved basketball, but I loved baseball more than anything. And I loved writing. I uh, read Tolkien and other things, and I loved writing. So you put the two together. My mom was a English teacher and that kind of thing. My dad was a journalist and loved baseball. And you put the two together and uh, what do you get? You get a baseball writer. So I love Roger. I don't know. I actually know how to say his last name, Angel. And uh, I just love good writing. Rick Fields, who wrote um, How the Swans Came to the Lake, Thoreau, a wide range of writers. Now those would include Michael Pollan, I think is an amazing writer, Malcolm Gladwell, uh, What's Her Face, who wrote the uh, Eat, Pray, Love. I think she's an amazing writer. Um, I just love good writing. I love Fitzgerald. I love Kerouac. I love Twain. So I wanted to write. I wanted to be a baseball writer. When I grew up, I decided I just wanted to be a journalist because what 
what a cool job it would be to travel the world and get paid to do so and write about it and share good things with good people. But then it turned out I was highly incompetent at working for people. I, even to this day, I get dumbed down and I get insecure in a kind of debilitating way. On the other hand, I'm very good at working for mentors or bosses who I respected. So I basically sought out good mentors. I had no business skills from my mom growing up. She knew nothing about business and really didn't care. She didn't care about money. She just cared about living a good life, being a good mom and practicing the Buddha Dharma and teaching Buddhism. She's a very cool lady. So Elizabeth Gilbert, thank you. Um, couldn't think of her name. So, um, so I wanted to start my own business. This was after I got fired from a couple different jobs that I should have been really good at. So I got fired from two jobs. One was a barista. One was working for Shambhala Publications. Great company. I buy their books to this day. No hard feelings. I had amazing uh, colleagues there. I just sucked at being an employee and learning. So eventually I started finding all these great mentors. I learned from them and I found mentors who wanted to invest in me and wanted to invest in the next generation and weren't challenged or threatened by, you know, young, insecure, arrogant, brash, bold, ambitious, arrogant youth, right? Young people can be a little bit like you kind of want to suppress them a little bit. Um, but luckily I found mentors who didn't want to suppress me. They wanted to kind of shape me and nurture me what was best in me. So I found that. And then I started, eventually I started Elephant. And basically what I wanted to do with Elephant is I wanted to start something meaningful that could be good for the world, that could raise issues like the reefs are dying, right? Or palm oil, which is in many vegan foods, uh, or even shampoo or whatever, is killing uh, animals, orangutan, rhino, tiger. Um, there are social justice issues and racism. And uh, like we're seeing with the Native American uh, protests right now, there are amazing causes to get behind and support. So there's a lot of sort of negative or intense things that you want to bring awareness to at the same time there's a lot of positive things you want to bring awareness to like how to eat good food so I get to interview all these amazing people Michael Pollan or Deepak Chopra or Bill McKibben you know we can cover any issue um, check out those videos at youtube.com slash elephant journal and I've gotten to interview basically anyone who I want including Mr. Howard Dean Governor Howard Dean who I mentioned earlier who really helped um, you know with Citizens United being a horrible thing, uh, the rise of internet small donations for campaigns is a wonderful thing. And that's benefiting Trump too. It's a bipartisan, wonderful thing. I would love to see something arise that could defeat gerrymandering for the sake of both sides and make that fair. So we started Elephant. So I was good at writing, hopefully. I was good at editing. I was decent at ad sales and actually the business part because I'd had great mentors. And I was good at working really hard forever without stopping or giving up, even if I was super broke. And I was good at eating day old muffins. So I was a great entrepreneur. I could be kind of half starving and just work really hard and be inspired and bring a lot of people together and do mostly a good job. Obviously, I've failed many times over the years. I fail at least a couple times every day. So now we have 23 staff. We have 10 million readers a month. We have all these you know, national awards in Twitter, Facebook, 5 million fans, way more than MSNBC or something. And we're trying to do good journalism and offer good creative writing that's good for people. How is this applicable to you? Well, you have to find something that you're good at. Right livelihood doesn't work if you're not good at it. So if I want to be a dancer, but I am not good at ballet and I've tried and I'm just, or music or whatever it is, then that's out, right? It has to be something you're really good at. So think about what are you good at? This is sort of a Venn diagram. What are you good at? You know, Venn diagram is what overlaps in the middle. So what are you good at? What can you make money doing? You have to be able to find a way to make a living doing it. There's nothing bad about money. It's very good to be able to pay your bills and, um, you know, buy good food or take care of your children or uh, uh, pay your mortgage, whatever it is. So what can you make money doing? So if you're good at something, but you can't make money doing it, like I'm very good as a drill sergeant, which is a weird thing, but I grew up doing that in the Buddhist tradition, but I can't make money doing it. No, I can't. Maybe I could start a summer camp, but I learned it at a summer camp, which is wonderful. And anyway, I can't make money doing it. So that's out. 
what is good for the world, good for other people. If it's if you're good at doing it, you can make money doing it. That could be day trading. Not that day trading is bad, but day trading may not be good for the world, right? So what is good for the world? And then um, I think the final thing is what do you love doing? So you have to love doing it. You have to really want to devote the greater part of your life to doing it. So aside from family or uh, your spiritual path, um, work is probably the most significant part of many of our lives just in terms of hours and focus it's eight hours of the bulk of the meat of our day um so i think that's right livelihood i've done other videos on it super obvious but it's really good to just think about it especially if you're in college or something think about it in that way what would you like to spend the rest of your life doing what would you love to spend the rest of your life doing that you can make money doing that is good for the world and that you happen to be really good at it all right, folks, let's bow, take a good posture and relax and bow in mutual respect. Have a wonderful Labor Day. And get our Elephant Newsletter, elephantjournal.com slash best. And if you want to join our online training academy where we teach everything that we know how to do it, it's elephantjournal.com slash academy. And the final uh, deadline uh, for the fall semester is today. So elephantjournal.com slash academy. And even if you're just interested, you can put in, I'm just interested. And then you'll hear about further ones, uh, but only if you want. And if you like this video, give it a like, give it a share. But most importantly, subscribe on youtube.com slash elephantjournal or our newsletter, elephantjournal.com slash best. All right. Hope that was fun. Have a great one.